This is a continuation of the Mastercam introduction video that focused on workspace setup and artwork creation. If you haven't already watched this video, you should probably do so now. If you have watched it, uh, this video will show you uh, the proper way to set up stock that you will be cutting in Mastercam and also how to create a toolpath for the artwork that you've just created. Uh, but before we can create a toolpath, we need to select a machine type and there's a couple of settings we have to adjust here. So I want you to go up to machine type here, menu, left click, and hover over the mill, and I want you to go to manage list, and I want you to look for the Larkin camtoolmmd 6 file, and I want you to add it, and then select OK, and I want you to do the same thing for router, manage, and you're going to look for the router, or sorry, the Larkin camtool router, rmd-6 file and add it select and now when we go back to machine type you'll notice when we go to either mill or router you'll see a default tool has been created in here and we can use either one for what we're going to do I'm going to use the router uh, I just want you to left click on this and when you do that you should notice a couple of new files open up over in your operations manager manager sorry this will uh, allow you to uh, create uh, your stock setup and what we're going to do now is we're going to left click on this plus sign beside properties and left click again with your mouse on stock setup. The window that opens up has a bunch of uh, properties you can you can uh, vary in here. The main one we're going to focus on is this representation of our piece of wood or our, or our stock and we want to make sure that the uh, values for the X and Y and Z represent what we drew on our uh, on our workspace earlier. So if you remember the length of our piece of wood was 10 inches so that's the X value and the height of the piece of wood was 3.5 inches and the thickness we're gonna use is gonna be 0.5 of an inch, half an inch and I also want to change where this stock origin is. You can see this uh, these are the values that Mastercam uses. I want to move this stock origin over to the corner. So I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to left click my mouse right there. And you can see the little coordinate thing moved right with the arrow. And I want you to select display. I want to show that on our workspace. And I think that's everything on that screen. I'm going to select OK at the bottom here. What you should see on your uh, screen now is you should see a red dotted line around the outside of your rectangle. That's indicating your stock, your piece of wood. And if I have my mouse anywhere on the blue work area and I press down the scroll ball and move my mouse around, I have dynamic control of what part of that piece of wood I look at. And I, so I can kind of look at it in 3D. I can still zoom in and zoom out with my scroll ball. But uh, I have to be pressing, my, pressing the scroll ball down and then moving the mouse, not the scroll ball, moving the mouse around to kind of look at it in different positions or different angles. And you'll see, you'll see that the letters are right on the very top plane of the uh, dotted line or the imaginary piece of wood. Um, the red dots indicate the stock outline. And it kind of gives you a more realistic uh, idea of what you're going to be doing uh, with this artwork. If you get uh, in the process of moving, moving, uh, moving your artwork around, if you get it kind of all messed up and you want to look at it just normal again, uh, the easiest way to do that is just to move up here and left click on top. And it'll bring it back into a 2D kind of look or view. And uh, you can still use the scroll ball to zoom in or zoom out in any area. Okay, now that we've set up the stock, let's create the tool path itself. So we need to go up to the tool path menu, move down to engraving, and in your window that comes up, your window will probably just have a capital T in it. This is a good time for you to type in your name or give it a name, so you might as well use the name you're using, and select OK. Here's Mastercam's prompt again. It wants to know what do you want to create a toolpath for. Um, so it's it's asking us how do you want to select it and what are you going to select. So the chaining window here gives us options of how to select what we want Mastercam to cut. We could probably use the best one for this case would probably be a window 
or a polygon. A polygon is just a kind of a fancy shaped window. Um, I'm going to select the polygon this time and I'm just going to left click once and you can see I'm just kind of drawing a box around my letters and as soon as I have enclosed just my letters I'm going to double click on the last point to select it. You can see that Mastercam is asking for the next prompt or it says sketch approximate start point. Uh, just like before um, the tool is starting right at zero zero right where my mouse is right now it makes sense to have the tool start close to where it is resting so anywhere here is fine for a start point and if I've selected and everything's worked properly my letters should be highlighted in yellow and they are so I'm good to select OK over here when you select OK a new window opens up an engraving window which has three tabs across the front um, first thing th that we're going to deal with is the toolpath parameters we have to select a tool we have an empty tool tool window so we want to go to the tool library and I'm going to left click on that and I want to filter everything out. You might have a whole bunch of things selected in yours. It doesn't really matter if you do or you don't. I want to. I want you to select none first, and I want you to come back and just select the engraving bit icon, and then I'm going to select OK. And what we've done is we've filtered out every other type of uh, bit we can cut with except the engraving ones. And I know that we need to use tool bit number 10, this is the one we're going to use in our machine and this has a, a five thousandths inch tip on it um, very 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 sharp tip on it just for reference uh, a strand of hair is normally about two to three thousandths of an inch thick so one strand of hair is about half this okay so it's a pretty pretty sharp point and I'm gonna select OK so now we have something in our toolpath window that's that's what we want if we double click like left click on this a window comes up showing us a visual representation of all the parameters um, that are associated with this bit I want you to change a couple of them I want you to change the shank diameter to 0 0.25 and I also want you to change the outside diameter to 0 0.5 and then hit the enter button on your keyboard and what you should notice here is the visual representation of what the tool bit looks like has changed. So remember, that's the that's the point that is about the thickness of two of your hairs. All right, we can click the OK button. I think that's all we need to do on that screen. And next one is the engraving parameters window. And for this uh, for this project, we don't really have to worry about any of these other windows. Really, we're only concerned with the depth, how far we're going to cut into our piece of wood. And in order for Mastercam to cut, we always have to have a negative value in this in this window. Um, the default right now is five hundredths of an inch, or fifty fifty thousandths of an inch. Um, this is a good, you know, preliminary cut to uh, to try and see what it looks like. We'll be able to um, verify it in a simulation window later, just so you can see if you like it or not. So we're 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 just going to leave this as it is. Um, if you wanted to cut deeper, this is where you'd change the value. Okay, but for now, I'm just going to leave it at 0.05. Neg sorry, negative 0.05. I'm going to click OK here. And if I've done everything right, you should see an extra set of blue lines just kind of tracing close to my original letters. And what that's showing you is the toolpath. There are some colors here. Hopefully, it's showing on your computer. The uh, blue line is actually the tool cutting. The yellow line is the tool picking itself up and moving to the next letter. So you can see that everything's worked properly um, for this font. You'll remember in the first video, I said some fonts work better than others. If when you selected OK and you didn't get this, you didn't get the blue line tracing close to your letters, um, chances are you picked a font that it's not going to work as well. Uh, it'll come up with a bunch of error windows. Um, basically, it's telling you to choose another font. Like I said, some of the script fonts, some of the handwriting fonts um, don't work as well. So if you get those error messages, just change change to a different font. Uh, now that we've have now that we have our toolpath, um, let's see what it looks like. Right? We've kind of looked at it on this screen, and it you know you can kind of see what's going on. But let's, uh, let's go to a simulation window. And over here on the operations manager, 
there is a verify icon and if I left click on it a new window opens up your workspace over here should have changed too you will now see a piece of green uh, wood if you will that's the simulation color um, and again you have full control over how you look at it what scale you look at it on right you can just zoom in or zoom out and all you're gonna do is you're gonna select you're gonna left click on the turbo button here and you're gonna push the machine it looks like a play button and you should notice that the machine has simulated what it's gonna do I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see it um, it's cutting the outline of the letters and again you can look at this at what at whatever magnification you choose to and if uh, it like I said it's a nice way to look and see what's gonna happen when you actually set the machine up to cut if this is what you are if this is the look you're going for then you're done I want to show you something else though, where it's pretty easy to change um, it's pretty easy to change stuff in Mastercams. So I'm just going to select OK. And let's pretend that we didn't really like that or we're, we want to keep playing. Let's go back to Parameters window. And let's go to the Engraving Parameters. And is this the window? No. So again, if I wanted it deeper, I could just change, change that value there. But what I want to show you is if we come over to the third uh, tab and select Rough, you will notice now that I don't have the extra blue line here. That's because Mastercam knows I've changed or altered the toolpath. And if you look over in the Operations Manager, there's a big red X through the toolpath. And it's saying, hey, you updated something. you got to regenerate the new, new toolpath. So there's a button right here, Regenerate All Operations. And all you do is left click on it. And now you see the representation of what it's going to do. Now it's now it's removing all of the material inside the letters. And if you zoom in enough, a couple of thousand times, you can actually see those lines that I'm zooming into. That's the tool bit. That's the thickness of two of your hairs going back and forth, removing all that material. Now, this wouldn't be an efficient tool to do this with. But for simulation purposes, it, it makes no difference, right? I'm just going to go back to the Verify button. I want to see what this looks like. The turbo button is still selected, and I'm going to select the Play button. And now I'm going to move my mouse back over here and zoom in and look at it. Maybe this is the look you le you're looking for. Not sure. Doesn't matter at this point. This is going to be your call. You have now created a toolpath, and you have a couple options as, as to the way it looks. Uh, in the next video, I will show you how to make an efficient toolpath, because again, we wouldn't make one with this tool, tool bit, because it's the thickness of a couple of hairs. But I'll show you how to change it so it would be more efficient, and I'll also show you how to create the NC file uh, that the CNC router needs. Thanks for watching.